Hello, and welcome to coverage of Grin's Gordome for the custom standard format. I'm Caillou, and today we're going to be watching the Swiss round four match between Zhu, who's playing Big Blue, and Zerapath, who's playing Jeskai Dune Control. Both of these decks are essentially uh, control decks. Uh, Zhu's is a little bit more tempo-y, but um, essentially they both have the plan of having early interaction which allows them to survive to the late game and then resolve one of their uh, strong win cons. In Zoo's case, that's an avatar of the ocean, while for Zerapath, it's a choking dunes. I do think Zoo might be slightly favored in this matchup because um, he's got stuff like Kalepa Tide Surger, which can bounce Zerapath's uh, choking dunes as it's an enchantment. He's also got uh, more uh, counter magic, and his win cons generate card advantage, which Zerapaths don't. So we're going to see Zoo play the first spell of the game. Going to play an opt on the end of uh, Zerapath's turn, drawing into a wall of mysteries. This is just a good play. It's essentially just a cantrip here because Zerapath does not have any creatures to my knowledge. But also Zerapath doesn't have any uh, turn, two, turn three plays that I think Zoo would be afraid of and therefore wouldn't need to like pretend to hold up counter magic there. And Zerapath is going to respond in kind, playing a wall of mysteries of his own, drawing into a shock fetch. He's immediately going to run that out. Zerapath's de deck runs a lot of shock fetches in order to enable choking dunes, because uh, since choking dunes deals damage uh, equal to the number of land cards in your graveyard to any target, and that's how it functions as a win con. So Zoo unfortunately ending up with a cryo cell and a render inert in his hand, Neither of which are particularly good in this matchup, since they're basically just dead. Zoo should probably just uh, hold up his mana and pretend to have interaction. Um, and then if Zerapath doesn't play anything scary, just opt. If Zerapath does play something scary, Zoo can actually opt in response and then try to draw into a disrupting current to counter it. So, so Zerapath can run out... Ooh, I was saying Zerapath could run out another Wall of Mysteries or Sarasa. But... I think uh, Zerapath is worried about having to hold up interaction for a Mirage Oddity. I do think that running out the Wall of Mysteries and then holding up Sink Into Doubt X equals 1 is probably good enough. But yeah, on end, Zoo is going to play an Opt and draws into a Coral Barrens. This is one of the main deckable um, non-basic land hate that uh, Zoo has access to. And then draws into an Island. Hmm, so the question is... If you're Zoo, do you want to take a turn off to just nuke one of Zerapath's lands? I don't think it would put Zerapath off anything. Like, I guess you would technically put Zerapath off of Epic of Ekbrom with the, by killing one of the blue producing lands, but Zerapath's, like, land lineup is pretty solid at this point. Speaking of Epic of Ekbrom, there's a top deck right from Zerapath. So Zerapath's going to run out a second Wall of Mysteries. Zoo is going to let that resolve. And then just gonna pass. And is keeping up these sink into doubts in in the event of uh, Avatar of the Ocean. Zoo, however, still not drawing into a win con. Just gonna pass. Has coordinated the commotion and sand warp up in case Zerapath has anything scary. And yeah, these sink into doubts being uncounterable is definitely gonna put in a lot of work in this matchup. Because um if you watch the match between uh Zoo and Zangi, like there ended up being lots of uh, counter wars on the stack, which Zoo generally would win because of stuff like Spell Pierce. Uh, sinking it out just, like, stops that. Anyways, on end, Zerapath's just going to go to end and then on end discard the L3T. Huh. I don't know if I agree with this, honestly. L3T is minus two. It doesn't work as well. Hmm, I know I would keep up L3T as an as a answer to... A resolved avatar of the ocean. I I guess taken for questioning fulfills the same purpose, but also L3T is a win con. I don't know that L3T is more valuable than a Sarasa. I'm sorry, I don't think that Sarasa is more valuable than an L3T, potentially. But yeah, Zoo is gonna play a Coral Barons, activate it. I guess Zerapath's thought with keeping the Sarasa is he's only at four lands, needs six lands to play his win con, and doesn't have a win con. But yeah, so Zerapath is gonna Tap it for a blue in response, but then let it die. And there's a Choking Dunes from Zerapath, but can't play it. So he's going to try and run out of Sarasa. 
I think if you're Zoo, you're pretty comfortable just coordinated commotioning this. Yup. And then bounces the wall of mystery with coordinated commotion just to get to use the cantripping again. Ooh, would have been really good to hit one of uh, his win cons there, but doesn't. Instead runs into his spell pierce, which, as we mentioned before, good for counter wars, but not very good against sink into doubts. Can run out um, the wall of mysteries again and still hold up uh, a coordinated commotion number two, though. Especially since Zerapath is locked at three lands. So yep, Wall of Mysteries is going to come down once more. And hitting more interaction, that's a second Sand Warp. And then has to go to end, discarding to hand size at Render Inert, which again, makes sense as, because as I mentioned earlier, it's not really, this Cryocell and Render Inert are basically useless in this matchup. Zerapath hitting a second Epic of Ekbrom. And it's just going to pass. It's going to discard the Taken for Questioning because it's uncastable, but this is really bad mana screw. Zerapath can't play basically ha more than half of his hand, and Zoo drawing into a Mirage Oddity, that's a win con. On end is just going to discard a Cryo Cell. I guess it's just waiting for Zerapath to tap out to resolve his Mirage Oddity. And there's the, uh, that there's the land from Zerapath. Meanwhile, Zoo hitting a Luminescent Lagoon, that's an uncounterable win con. Uh, Zerapath can um, Epic of Ekbrom X equals 1 to bounce it, though. Also has a Wrath of Mod if he does hit a white land. So Zoo seems to be considering whether or not to run out the Mirage Oddity. So Zerapath can sink into doubt for 3, which Zoo wouldn't be able to pay. So as long as Zoo sees that, he shouldn't run out the Mirage Oddity. Yup, it's just going to pass, and then probably discard an instant or sorcery right here. No, it's discarding the Kalepa Tide Searcher. That's interesting. I would actually think that Zoo would want to discard some of the, some of this interaction. Okay, and on end is going to Epic of Ekbrom, and the reason I was, just quickly before we move on, the reason I was saying that he should discard some of these instants or sorceries is because he has a bunch of interaction up already, and then discarding more of it allows him to turn on Luminescent Lagoon this turn. Whereas now he's only got four instants or sorceries in graveyard and therefore can't flip this luminescent lagoon. But yeah, I'm surprised that Zerapath didn't uh, Epic of Ekbrom himself on that uh, Epic of Ekbrom just because of how much card advantage it generated, but I guess was scared that Zoo had another win con. Like this Mirage Oddity, which now that Zoo has three mana up, um, Zerapath cannot counter without getting into a counter war, which. Um, Zerapath will lose. I think if you're Zerapath, you have to try and counter this with the coordinated commotion. Oh, he's gonna sand warp it. Um, I think this is a bad call. Coordinative commotion would have been better here because Zerapath would have also gotten to bounce a land. Wait, and is casting it for its alt cost? This is such a weird play. I'm confused as to why Zerapath would cast sand warp for its alt cost first. Because, right, in this situation, playing it for the alt cost should be, like, the last resort. It's shooting Zerapath in the foot. Zoo is going to play Disrupting Current. Zerapath can now sink into doubt that and win the counter war. But, like, could have done this the other way around. I guess the reason Zerapath wanted to do it this way is for this exact sequence of sink into doubt, Disrupting Current, Sand Warp, and then Zoo has the... Spell Pierce, so maybe it is Big Brain, but still. So yeah, the Mirage Oddity is countered, but I don't think that Zerapath is going to be winning this game. Literally none of Zerapath's cards are castable right now. And the only ones that will be castable are like Blazing Offerings and Sink Into Doubt. All the rest have uh, double or triple pip mana requirements. And now Zoo has... Um, enough instants or sorceries in graveyard to flip this luminescent lagoon and yup is going to do just that flipping luminescent lagoon into gaulani swings in for four and gets to draw a card and basically still has uh two pieces of interaction up because disrupting current plus spell pierce or sand warp plus spell pierce and on end is going to is going to discard the spell pierce and not one of the lands that is baffling to me and Zerapath does hit a land, hits the Sea Soaked Cliffs, 
what a top deck because now is able to blazing offerings the Galani. Unfortunately, Zoo has the counter magic for this. So yeah, he's just gonna run out the coordinated commotion, bouncing the wall of mysteries. And I don't know that there's I don't know that there's a good way out of this for Zerapath because Zoo is gonna be generating so much card advantage off of this Galani. Oh, and Zoo top decks the Coral Barons and can use it to immediately shoot the sea soaked cliffs. And yeah, Zerapath's gonna concede there. That was that was a really brutal case of mana screw into really unfavorable sand warp situation. And then Gaulani is just insane. Like I mentioned earlier, Zoo's threats just generate card advantage. That just makes and they also, I guess, they go on they're much smaller than Zer than Zerapath, so they come down quicker with counter magic. But yeah, also they just generate card advantage as well. And that's very hard to beat in this uh control matchup. But yeah, before we go into game two, let's see what these players could bring in from the sideboard. So Zerapath has I think the two sink into doubts should definitely come in. They're just they're bonkers in this matchup. The essence scatters, I don't know. Maybe I don't think so. I mean, I guess something's got to come in for. I guess the wrath of mod hits resolved creatures, so maybe does want a rat like a resolved Gaulani. So maybe does want that, but I don't know. I think the essence scatters could come in, and the sink into doubts will definitely come in. That's my read on Zerapath sideboarding. Meanwhile, for Zoo, the Deluge Titan is pretty crazy if it gets to resolve. Um, Ankalim is another threat. I could see, I think the Render Inerts and Cryosols are dead, so those are definitely coming out. So something's coming in. Epic of Ekbarom is super good. I think Spell Pierce and Sand Warp are just like the Control Mirror Breaker. But the Sink Into Doubts may make... Uh, uh, zoo a little bit wary of sighting in spell pierce because a spell pierce is far worse when they have an uncounterable counter spell. So I could see if Zoo wants to put on more of the pressure with Deluge uh, Titan and Tempered Onclum, that could be one way to play it, or just sight in Epic of Ekbrom and the Sand Warps, um, and then keep up with this kind of like I am playing control better than you game plan. Okay, getting into game two. Um, Zerapath's going to be on the play once again, which does technically let him get under some of uh, Zoo's counter magic and makes Zerapath's taxing counter magic a little bit better. Zoo over here, keeping a hand with an Avatar of the Ocean this time, did side in the Tempered Onkelims, it looks like. Meanwhile, Zerapath's just going to run out of Wall of Mysteries. I think we're going to see a repeat of Game 1, where Zoo's going to opt here and then... Uh, respond with a wall of mysteries of his own. But yeah, once again, I feel like the interaction that Zerapath has taken for questioning is fine, but it really, I think you really want counter magic in this matchup, and Zerapath does not have that. Also, Zoo being on the draw just gives him access, like having access to that one extra card in this control matchup is actually might just be better. If, because Zoo is more willing to take his time in this matchup rather than play a tempo game and can definitely wait Zerapath out rather than having to run stuff into taxing counter magic. And there's a Coral Barons from Zoo. If uh, if he's able to run that out next turn, could really hammer Zerapath again. Because uh, if he puts Zerapath off the blue, then Zerapath's going to have lots of trouble casting that Epic of Ekbrom because currently Epic of Ekbrom and Coordinate Commotion are both dead. Which, yeah, having your only interaction... Um, other than Essence Scatter v. Dead is not a good place to be. And this will, like, even further... Like, Zerapath will have to top deck two blue lands after that. Could... I guess could technically activate Field of Ruin. Um, oh, but can't... Like, it needs a... Tar it needs a target non-basic land. So can't use it to fix himself for a blue. Yeah, Zer Zoo is just going to run out a second Wall of Mysteries... This time hitting a Mirage Oddity has got a slew of pressure to put on here. I think though, with the double Coral Barons, if you're Zoo, I think you just play Coral Barons number one, shoot um, this Lakeside Park. Yep, it's gonna do that. Because hey, if Zerapath's only on one blue mana, and doesn't ha at that point, you can cast all of your win cons without having to worry about anything. It's a pretty good life to be living. Because Mirage Oddity, you it's very difficult to kill unless you have multiple 
pieces of removal one after another because of its uh, self-flicker ability. So you really have to interact with it on stack. Meanwhile, Avatar of the Ocean, um, Zoo can just wait and hold up counter magic with it. Or if they even if they turn to kill it, you draw a card off of it, so it's not that bad. You can often draw into extra win cons just by having it resolve. So yeah, with their path off blue mana, this is going to be a, a beating. Because this means Zerapath's only live spell is a taken for questioning. Meanwhile, if Zoo is aggressive here, can play a Coral Barons and then immediately run out a Mirage Oddity. Or if he wants to be safer, could... Hmm, no, I think both plays are kind of reckless. Like playing Coral Barons, playing Mirage Oddity, and playing Coral Barons immediately crack at kill the Zephyr Peak are both like a little bit um, aggressive, but I think it's both of them are worth doing. Oh, but Zoo's just gonna pass. I feel like if there's any time to press your advantage, it would be this one. At the very least, play the Tempered Onclim. And that's another triple blue spell from Zerapath. It's just gonna go straight to end and discard the Wall of Mysteries. I think that's a mistake though. I feel like in this situation, you discard one of the Epic of Ekbrahms because you're so far off from casting those. If you get one blue source from the Wall of Mysteries, you can immediately play it and then hopefully cantrip into another land so that you can get your uh, coordinated commotions online. And Zoo is gonna run out the Avatar of the Ocean in response, Zerapath is going to crack his Field of Ruin, kill the Coral Barons. Now does have a uh, blue mana from the island, but is it going to be a little bit too late? I guess Zerapath can untap Taken for Questioning the Avatar of the Ocean, but Zoo has Sand Warp back up, so we'll be able to counter it. See, so yeah, I just going to draw an island off the Avatar of the Ocean trigger, just because... That just gives you more triggers off of it, basically. So yeah, Zerapath's going to try and run out this Taken for Questioning, but Zoo is not going to have any of it, I'm assuming. Just going to Sand Warp this immediately. Yup, here comes the Sand Warp. And now Zerapath is once again stuck with... I guess next turn can run out the Writing. I think, yeah, I don't see that there being a good way for Zerapath to come back here. Being uh, And Zoo is going to draw Luminescent Lagoon. Off the Avatar of the Ocean, that's another win con. Like, even if Zerapath finds an answer to these, this Avatar of the Ocean, Zoo has a Mirage Oddity. If Zerapath answers the Mirage Oddity, Zoo has a Luminescent Lagoon. Meanwhile, Zerapath has basically nothing and will need to draw several lands in a row to be able to play some of his good cards. Like, somehow force Zoo to not have interaction for this Choking Dunes. So, Zerapath's gonna try and run out of writing. Zoo is just going to spell pierce it. He has cards to spare anyways. And on end is just going to play out an opt. Trying probably to hit another island. Because, yeah. Because that not only uh, re-triggers Avatar of the Ocean, but allows Zoo to hold up an Epic of Ekbrahm. Uh, and that's a second Avatar of the Ocean that Zoo's grabbed. And without an answer to this, Zerapath is on a three-turn clock. There's another counterspell which doesn't affect the board. And like, even if Zerapath gets land land, um, and then is it able to somehow resolve this Choking Dunes, only has three lands in Graveyard, so won't be able to kill Avatar of the Ocean. Like, I don't know what Zerapath's outs are here. Zoo gonna swing in for another four at the Avatar of the Ocean, T minus two. I'm gonna say if Zoo wanted to get greedy, could also run out of Mirage Oddity right now, but I don't think there's any reason to. Two turns is not significantly different from one turn, especially when Zerapath has no clock available. So Zerapath's going to try and run out another writing, but same old story, Spell Pierce. Zoo is like, you are not going to be drawing into any answers, thank you very much. Just going to swing in for another four with the Avatar. Main two, probably play the Luminescent Lagoon, because that guarantees a kill on a... I was going to play the Island. I actually disagree with that because Zoo already has overwhelming card advantage and playing the Luminous and Lagoon this turn um, guarantees killing Zerapath even if Zerapath has a, a removal spell for Avatar of the Ocean because Luminous, Luminous and Lagoon has pseudo haste next turn. And Zerapath has an L3T. It, this doesn't actually help because Zoo will just sacrifice one of the Wall of Mysteries instead of the Avatar of the Ocean. Or I guess... Zerapath can use this to gain 3 life. 
Huh, Zoo's letting it resolve. Xerapath's gonna plus one L3T, gain three life. I feel like Zoo could have easily disrupting currented that and then carried it on to a win. See, so yeah, I was gonna swing with the Avatar of the Ocean. Xerapath goes down to three life. And yeah, it's just gonna play the Tempered Onclim, drain Xerapath for three. <laughs> Xerapath's showing off his very, very unplayable hand. Yeah, ouch. Uh, good games, but man, it really sucks to see Xerapath not being able to... Because, I mean, there's one there, One thing is not being able to play any of your cards because you're in a control matchup. That's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you just get countered and lose. But seeing Xerapath get uh, so mana screwed and then Zoo having the perfectly timed Coral Barons really, really, really is painful because you want to see some of that cool back and forth. And while we did get some of that with Zoo um, and those uh, in that counter war in game one, I think overall Xerapath didn't get to do much this game. On a brighter note, Z I think this means that Zoo is 3-1 and therefore could potentially or is in contention for the cut to top four. So that's pretty exciting. And so until we're uh, covering the top four, um, this is Caillou signing off for now.